what to be. What are you contemplating? <laughs> this is <laughs> full scale. This is full scale. It's it's kind of close. I mean, you know, not as big as my head. You have an exceptionally it's... large noggin. Yeah. <laughs> He's funny, isn't he? Did you just get the orange one to match your watch band? It's pretty. And funny Look enough, you. you. You're color coordinated. You see my uh, brace that's got skulls on it, too. Sorry, I shouldn't say orange. You are of the era of Tang. You are Tang colored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? No, no. Oh, guess what? Guess what season it is? Pumpkin spice? What does that say? It's too small. It's screaming pumpkin. Pumpkin ale. So, mm. Wait, hold on. Fresh. <laughs> Is that the sound bite? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the sound bite right there. Oh, I, I feel like I'm out of podcast practice here. You, yeah, you've been in the I wilderness the for a little while. I went off the radar. <laughs> yeah, I like drove off the ranch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know what? I'm it's pretty positive, back. but I'm pretty positive you needed it. Oh, yeah, totally. And at the same time, like, it needed to be over. After <laughs> <laughs> oh, not one of those. It's like, okay, this was fun. Well, okay, so my, uh, yeah, my, no one's going to listen to this. Um, in my family, <laughs> I mean, uh, my, there you go. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. Like, my wife and I are done ca camping with kids, that's for sure. And I, like they're not yeah. even kids anymore. They're just they're yeah. not even kids. <laughs> they're they're all grown adults. But, and yet they are. And yet they're, and they're yet they are, and yet they are children. <laughs> they're they, they're all yeah. <laughs> uh, are they no not not all of them are legally adults. Yeah, they all are. I guess they side. all are. Yeah, yeah. On my side, they are. You you still got one, but yeah, I've got one. But so but she acts like an adult. Uh, that's different. <laughs> She acts like an adult. Where is, where is yours and even my all legal drinking age children still don't act like adults. You know when when the children are ready to come home, like mm -hmm. yeah, it's time to come home because you can't fight yeah. it. It's just like you don't even understand the 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 planning, the cost, the value. Right. Of the experience, right? To have that kind of an attitude, sir and ma'am, <laughs> madam. <laughs> and when you're stuck in a car, okay. So, any any guesses on my on my overall trip mileage? I kept track this time. Um, I know that when we were talking about it with my trip, you were near the i think you're like in the 2700 range but i'm gonna venture to guess to say around 4200 just because how'd you do that that's pretty damn good it was 4150 <laughs> miles because, because as a driver who drives all the time yeah. i i know that i know what's planned yeah and i know what happens right and it's not quite double, but pretty damn close. It, so it, because I, am, I mean, I you were you were pretty close on both accounts. Like like just to get there and to get back, it's about thirteen hundred and fifty ish each way. So that's right, pretty right. close to that's that is twenty seven hundred, right? Yeah, yeah. And then there's the forty two hundred that you came up with. So I'm wondering like how you did that because that that was. Because I do on. it all the time. <laughs> you just had a feeling. And it's just it's one of those, like, ingrained talent. things that, like, it's just like, hey, we're going here. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, let's double that. Yeah. And, I mean, it basically. But you're a wanderer. You're a wanderer. I'm, I'm a, a wanderer, wanderer at 10 miles per gallon, which <laughs> isn't great. <laughs> when, when you're towing. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Which is most of the time. So, um, I mean, there was definitely, like, there was a, a week that we, so, so back, I'll back up. Yeah. We drove from Southern Oregon across Eastern Oregon, and I learned on this trip, mm. Eastern Oregon is in another time zone. 
Why? I have no idea. I didn't know that Oregon was in two time zones, but it is. Pacific and Mountain? Yeah, so we got into Mountain Time, and we weren't even out of our state yet. (laughs) Okay, so tell me how often that happens to you. Never. (laughs) Only only if I'm in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Okay, so you actually because there there is a there is a small portion of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan that is in Central Time Zone, which everybody thinks that Detroit is in Central Time Zone anyway. I would have. I assume exactly. (laughs) We're like on the far, you know, like yeah western edge of the center of eastern time zone but it makes it yeah. great i mean for I, lexington remote. kentucky is also an eastern time zone it's pretty much directly south of you guys so yeah yeah, yeah. but even that i wouldn't have thought eastern time zone but here we are. It, it's funny as i can drive from michigan to florida and stay at eastern time zone yeah that's in wild. certain look it depending on which way i go say if i go the georgia route then yes. If I go the, you know, like say go through Alabama route, mm. then no, I'm in central time. So weird. Yeah. Yeah. So I learned that and it is an odd time zone map. It like it makes like this hook throughout Oregon. I, I assume it has to do with all the farming that happens in Eastern Oregon. I don't, I don't know for sure, but weird. Yeah. So then, uh, we drove through Southern Idaho, like through Boise, uh, Twin Falls, Twin Falls is pretty cool. Nice. There's a, a bridge that people are legally allowed to base jump off of there. No. And like, so everybody does. And you, you just go and jump. Like you just, did you? <laughs> like there's no, there's no referee calling too much wind. Like it's all up to you. It's totally a legal base jump. Did you jump. stop and watch? I did. I watched. I got a little video. Of somebody you didn't do it off. though. I didn't do it. Oh. So I sent a video to my friend who is a base jumper who like, every time I climb a new rock, he's like, can you jump off of it? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't know. That's not the kind of thing that I look up. Um, and so I sent a, the video of the guy who jumped that I took. I said, um, you know, of course, I'm sure you've jumped off this bridge. He sends me back. He's like, I've been mm-hmm. here Thursday through Saturday and I jumped nine times. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. crazy. So there you go. <laughs> uh, so just missed him, I guess. But uh, So the yeah. question that I would ask is why? I, like, it's a thrill-seeking it's a th- yeah. thing. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 And, and um, you know, prove how awesome you are. So. Um, so then we drove through a little bit of Utah, but then all the way across Wyoming, basically. Oh, wow. And let me tell you something mm-hmm. about Wyoming. <laughs> what about Wyoming? There are a couple good spots in Wyoming. A couple. And it's mostly very, very boring. So oh. um, there's a lot of oil production and so really the, bad roads. Really bad roads. So it Terrible is the roads. slightly more northern version of Kansas. Nothing against Kansas, but oh my God, it's flat. And oh yeah. my God, it's boring. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to uh, a couple spots in kansas that were not flat nor boring they were actually quite beautiful um you gotta tell me where those are because i miss them (laughs) (laughs) i'm 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 struggling to to recall the what Mm. what is the capital of kansas what is it um there's some somebody can help us out here leave a comment it's not me i'm not gonna no no i'm not gonna look it up right now that's where it's beautiful. There, it's like lake okay. country. It's rolling hills. Very, extremely beautiful. So I did a talk there for AIA Kansas. And, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I got to that's do a, right. a fun little tour with somebody there, and <clears throat> it, was, it was quite beautiful. So I've it's not Kansas City, there. just in case that was your guess. No, it's not no, it was, no, I've been through Kansas City, and the thing that you can see best from the interstate is the Chiefs Stadium. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a huge fan, I know. So, yeah. Yeah, sure. A little bit of dead air there, Cormac. <laughs> I'm, fa- I'm a fan that the past two meetings of the Detroit Lions and the Kansas City Chiefs, Detroit won. So, wow. Nah. Oh. You, Swift wasn't there, I guess. So it's Topeka. That's where it was. I, I did look it up. I, oh yeah, that's right. You were that. I I remember when you went there. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, but, uh, it left an indelible mark on my head. <laughs> well, the landscape. 
<laughs> landscape. It was clearly. it was amazing. Yeah, beautiful. So so anyway, you're on a tangent. We, I didn't go through Kansas. I went through Wyoming, and then <laughs> we got into South Dakota, the Black Hills of South Dakota. Yeah. So really far away, really long to get there. Extremely gorgeous. Ex- just beautiful. I mean, and so if you ever wondered, is there a spot in the Dakotas to go to? I highly, highly yeah. recommend. Yeah. And there's a, there's so much to do there. We spent eight days there, and we filled every day. And, and I was like, my wife and I once again lamented the fact that we don't go on vacations. Mm-hmm. And and I say that I've said that previously, like this was a good thing. And this time, I think we're just kind of like we needed to go get away. And yeah. what we did is we went on a trip, right? Which is what we do because we're not likely going back to the same place again right uh so yeah. we did all of the things and it, it's just kind of a grind at some level and at the at another level you're, you're kind of glad you saw it all when you were there so not quite sure how i haven't fully internalized this yet but so we've we both kind of hinted as we were kind of like yes in the mileage and all this other stuff that we're drivers wanderers and stuff like that Mm-hmm. So my summer trip, I can see, I, you know, I stumble across a few places that I definitely want to see again or explore more. Sure. Is there anywhere on your journey that you're like, yeah, we got to come back here? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's two spots. I, I would, I would go back to the Black Hills of South Dakota because okay. there's so much more rock climbing I could do there. That was just, I did a couple of routes and some boulders and stuff. And it was, okay. it was the highlight of the trip. And it's just like, I can't, you can't even believe how many rocks there are. To climb. So as a rock climber, <laughs> it's like everywhere you look, it's like rocks. It's amazing. Um, nice. and, and really wonderful climbing. So yeah, for sure. Um, but we did the Badlands. We did Jewel Caves National Park. We did uh, Mount Rushmore. We did the Black Hills. We did tons of like little stuff. We did... Um, the um, Crazy Horse National Monument, which is absolutely insane um, yeah. project that they've been working on for like 80 years to do something like Mount Rushmore for Crazy Horse, yeah. which is a, a really cool and, and even bigger at, a, at an even bigger scale, which is really incredible. Um, trying to think what else we did. There, there was a bunch of little stuff. The one place that I, we didn't get to go that I would love to go would be Wind Caves National Park. And that was closed because they're installing an elevator. Um, yeah. So you can't go in at all. And so we decided, like, because we couldn't have the full experience there, we decided to wait until when and if there might be a next time. So. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, there's so much to do there. I mean, it, and I'm glad that we kind of planned it more than, like, three days because I think we would really would have felt like we didn't get to experience all that it had to offer if we had a shorter period there. But I feel like we... We did really dang good. And we got to see the 47th annual Studebaker show, which Ooh. I sent you a couple oh, yeah, of photos yeah. from. Yeah, that's... Which was, and that's in Custer, uh, uh, South Dakota, once a year. And, I mean, we just happened upon that. It's not like I planned on that. I, we just saw it. I'm like, I need to stop there. Got to go. <laughs> to look. And they were in, incredible. That was super yeah. cool. Yeah, so a bunch every, of fun stuff. Every time I see a Studebaker, my father had a Golden Hawk. And um, I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. Yeah. And it was it was pretty amazing. I've got some photographs of it. But I always keep thinking, I'm like, ah, I want to get one to kind of restore and honor him. But, my gosh, they're, every time I talk to somebody who has one, they're like, yeah. oh, it's such a, such a pain. <laughs> There was this truck, and I, I got the, the story from the guy, and like he's, I'm looking through his photo book of the restoration, and it looked like he had, had it painted like four different times. And so I'm like, have you really painted it like four different times, right? It was this color, then that color. He's like, no, those were all donor trucks to make this truck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a four-to-one truck. Yeah. It took four trucks to build one truck. He said the only original part on this truck, the parts are the engine, and the transfer case and the frame, that was it. Wow. Everything else came from other vehicles to put that thing back together. So so I can't afford five vehicles. 
Right. <laughs> you got to have a place to put them. I don't even. You got to have yeah. a place to organize all that stuff while you're kind of figuring this out. You, he had. He said he bought another Studebaker truck to learn how to put together the truck that he was planning on putting together. Like, that's just uh, a little. That's like over the top. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> didn't you send me a picture of that truck? Uh, it was the white and blue one. It wasn't that oh. really crazy oh, okay. sculpted cab one. I'll, oh, okay. I'll put a, I'll put some pictures in the show notes for this. It was it was pretty fun. Because I mean, it's it's interesting the community, it just the car culture community in general. But I know that the Studebaker. I mean, I remember going to car shows down in Florida with my dad and he would stop at every single Studebaker and they would just sit there and chat the whole time. And, and <laughs> I, now trip. when I, I guess you don't see them that often, but no, well, I mean, you, you, you saw a whole entire like car show dedicated to them. Right. But it, it, it actually, now that I think about it, that must, what I felt when my dad would stop and sit and chat with all the Studebaker owners and stuff is probably what my kids feel now. They're like, oh, here goes my yep. dad. Yep. Going to be talking yep. about these cars. Whole family. <laughs> Especially if I stop and say, oh, there's a Triumph. Let's look. So my, my oldest son was with us, and he shoots. Uh, he has a, a Yashica double reflex camera, right? Yeah. So it looks like an old Roliflex or something. Yeah. And this thing is mint. He has this. It's a So it shoots 120. And he shoots like Portra 400 or 100. I think he was nice. shooting 100 in it. Uh, so it was it was kind of perfect for like the normal daylight stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, he got this camera like two years ago at a thrift store in mm -hmm. the original packaging had never been opened. Right. Oh, so this thing man. is just perfect. He got more comments about that camera because he was shooting film at the car show. And then he shot some at the Badlands. There was a guy working at the counter in Badlands who just saw it around his neck and it's like, I got to talk to you about your camera because I had one when I was in high school. And they just, he, he just nice. went, he just went off, you know, like down the rabbit tilted, hole yeah. of cool old cameras and stuff. And they would start talking about medium format and this and that and all this stuff. And, and, uh, it was really cool to see, but like that, that's another version of like these people who get together for the car shows. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> funny you say that. I just, had a conversation with a friend of mine from the army that I haven't spoken to in 30 years. And we were kind of messaging each other yesterday. I'm like, I was like, it might be easier if we just save our old fingers and call each other. He's like, you're right. And so he did. And then two hours later we hang up, but it, and he was just like, Oh, I see all these pictures that you post. And I've been getting into photography and things like that. And so we just like fell down this rabbit hole of talking about cameras and film versus digital. And he was asking me about like what kind of kit I use and vice versa and stuff. And you're right. It's just like when you see somebody who's got like that, that the same kind of like passion or whatever that you have in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're gonna, it, it, you make a new friend, a right. friend for life. Yeah. He brought. He also brought a thirty-five millimeter Minolta that I think he paid sixty dollars oh, for at a. Uh, right there, you, you got one too. My, that's my dad's Minolta. Yeah. My dad had one, had a Minolta too. My dad was a Minolta and, uh, shooter. He bought it at uh, a thrift store as well, and it was it's in really great condition. I didn't see him take it out to my, shoot it at all. And f last Christmas, I bought him like a six pack of expired Kodak Portra 400 film no, to put because it's, it's so just, cool to shoot. You never yeah. know what you're going to get oh, when yeah. you run some expired film through there, Exactly, but you might as well use it, you know? Um, oh yeah. Yeah. But he's so careful about what he shoots. And I think that's, what's so interesting about shooting film, right? It's like, you're kind of precious about the shots that you, cause you, you have can get the, you know, and, and I think about this often too, especially because behind my head, I've got a Canon AE-1 and then my uh, Minolta in both film cameras. And then what we're, what's staring at my, me in the face is my Fuji X-T series digital. And even though there's a lot of similarities in the way that you can control it and all that other stuff, I can just shoot for days. I mean, we could just shoot for days and I have like, how you many pictures did shooting. you take? Exactly. Right. It's like, how many pictures did you take? <laughs> I've got 37 of the same exact image, mm -hmm. but you have film and it's 36, you know, you've got 36 frames and right. 
I remember back when I was running the, um, the dark room at Auburn and I was shooting all the time and stuff. And it was, I was so selective in what I was shooting. You know, you set it up, you take your time. It is, it, it really is the true, like essence of the craft and you know this i, I know you know this. i <laughs> shot all slide and print photography of all my projects for my portfolio and yeah. i actually went to my photographer friend's studio to shoot my stuff too at the very end oh, like nice. when i had it all and i mean he was shooting medium format Hasselblad oh, shots my of dream. my stuff and he was using the polaroid back you know for all the test shots lighting make sure it was gonna actually what ends up on film is mm -hmm. gonna look like what you know properly exposed i still have the polaroid tear-offs right because yeah even those were cool right yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah yeah i still have those in a shoebox, and uh it's like those are worth scanning as well because they there's just some really cool quality yeah. the polaroid back stuff is all black and white mm -hmm. the actual shots are in color and it was just i mean it's there's something really cool and magical about that whole process that is kind of lost on, you know. What was funny was my son's using his iPhone as his light meter. Oh, right? yeah. So yeah. he's yeah. got a light meter app. It's looking through the camera on the iPhone so that he knows how to set up his camera so that That's he can cool. shoot and get the right exposure and everything. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. So I, pretty I, funny how they, the, the, the modern camera is the old light meter. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, you and I get together often, and, and it, what's funny is that both of us, on more times than not, will pack our big cameras, mm -hmm. and more often than not, those big cameras never come out of our, you know, right. out of the back. It's, you know, we it's reach for, enough. yeah, we we reach for the the iPhone and the one in your pocket, right? Exactly. <laughs> and we've had so many conversations about it. it's like, you know, the ease yeah. of just this and they're getting so much better and so much better. And like half yeah. of the, half of the stuff that I shoot now is on that, you know, just run it through Lightroom. And, and, and like you, my main camera is being used for this. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and it doesn't really uh, leave this desk anymore. Right, it's just exactly. one of those things where it's like, it's locked down. I don't want to reset it up. So, um, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because then like with us now switching to video and stuff and, and actually mm -hmm. it's just like, I want it to be in the right, the same position for every time. And, uh, it's not, there's so many settings, right? Like exactly. that's, that to me, that's what it, it's, oh, I just don't well, want to, find well, all because every time you go shoot you mess with everything yeah. on a camera and and i think um i don't know if it was the last recording or the recording before that where i was having trouble with it focusing on me right and i had no idea why so yeah. i mean yeah. and and it, your muscles your photographic muscles do atrophy if you don't use the yeah. equipment right i do love i, I mean I, i'll say that I, the thing that i love about the XT series is that you have exactly the same settings as that's on the Canon A1 in the Minolta. Um, the top buttons, you can just sit there and take it off of auto and start. It's like very much like a manual through. camera. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, that's cool. And you I, got a lot of buttons and knobs to twist. Thing. And a lot of times I will say that I have to like refresh my memory on which dial I'm turning. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally but, yep. but i want to so i want to hear more so you did climbing you know you did a lot of miles and stuff i i i, I gotta feel or i gotta just assume that there's some architecture in there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> very okay very little but <sighs> there there were there were some really cool um me. i mean you go into <laughs> you go into like the natural architecture of these oh, yeah. these yeah. formations and these caves mm -hmm. and like this is national park and, and these aren't the kind of national parks like Yellowstone. Like right, these are, right. these are national parks that are more like on the death Valley side of things where it's like, yeah, you are in your car driving three oh, yeah. or 400 <laughs> miles through the badlands, right. To yeah, get there and yeah. to get back and to tour through, I mean, driving on dirt roads for hours to, to go mm. see stuff and looking for <laughs> prairie dogs and Buffalo and all of the things that you can find out there. Um, we did stop at Wall Drug. Have you? Are you familiar with, with um, the familiar, brand? Yeah, I'm familiar the with original Wall Drug. Wall Drug. The, the Wall Drug. 
in in Wall, I believe the town was is named Wall, South Dakota, and uh, it was it was really cool. Um, like just totally kitschy. Um, I can't like it's the kind of thing that started small and just got added onto and added onto yeah. and added onto, and then eventually I think they they just like built a warehouse and then they infilled it with shops and made it l- look and feel like it was the old west. Back, yeah. This is the kind of place you can go and still get a five cent cup of coffee. Like, wow. That's absolutely like, incredible. I Super don't cool. know if you've ever been in, it's in South Carolina. It's called South of the Border. So it, it for those listeners who know, South of the Border is, in, I always thought of it as kind of like the East Coast version of Walt Drug. Okay. Because it is, it is very kitschy and, and it's grown to like insanity level proportions. It's got, you know, it, it has the gas station, the restaurant, the, you know, amusement yeah. parks, the, you know, and everything is south of the border themed Yeah, in the yeah. middle of the Carolinas. <laughs> this is so. a place that has like the moccasin gift shop, the bookstore, the chapel, the oh, yeah, parlor, yeah. the ice cream, uh, uh, the everything. It has a- everything under the roof. I mean, it was it was pretty cool, actually. I, everything that was really everything that you ch- yeah everything you just rattled off uh, south of the border has the same. Yeah, so yeah, pretty cool. Well, yeah, you, architecturally, I'm I uh, I have to say, man, it was not an architectural trip. In well, you just ran across like the fashion. most vacant, like part of the sparse, country, sparse, sparsely populated parts of the country. Right. And so if you, even if you found architecture per se, it was way out, probably way out of your way, or it was just. The coolest architecture that I saw was literally ghost towns, real ghost towns that were just abandoned. They used to be a roadside attraction or they used to be a town on a highway Mm-hmm. And they were they were so cool. Like we had to stop and photograph them, you know. Right. And 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 that was to me kind of a. I love that kind of. You know, this yeah. is very much the uh, Atlas Obscura kind of. Oh, you know my <laughs> ruins. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, and and my my youngest who was there, you know, he was just like, how can I get into that bill that very unsafe building? Like, <laughs> how can I how can I sneak in there? And uh, it's. Just he do would it. love doing an Atlas Obscura kind of a road trip for sure. Well, I mean, where you used to live when we, when my son and I took that, that long trip, that coast to coast trip, and we had basically left from LA, went through your town and then kind of like out towards Vegas and kind of out that way. We hit things like the, there was the ghost towns in in the mountains of California. Oh yeah. Like um, Calico and Calico. Exactly. Thank mm-hmm. you. I was forgetting which I knew it started with a C and then, and then you get in there and then you're driving along like what seemingly is the more abandoned parts of route 66 and Rockahula water park. That's completely abandoned. And the ruins there are completely just graffitied out. And there's some pretty, actually what's funny is, way back in the day when I, when we did this, this was 2019 and we, uh, I posted some photos, the, the actual like poet that tagged a couple of them had seen them and commented on my photographs and they're like, Hey, would you mind if I, uh, repost some of your pictures of my poet cool. poetry? I'm like, oh, absolutely dude. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't but want it, royalties, at least. You know, no, no, they just thought it was, you know. <laughs> Take down notice for your photos of their artwork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we, on our way back, we did a little bit of a different route. We were originally going to go through the Tetons and Jackson Hole, up <laughs> just south of uh, Yellowstone. But we have been there before, and nobody had, like, a thing they really wanted to do there. So I successfully <laughs> lobbied for us to go to Park City, Utah, where I could do some mountain biking. Okay. Um, but on the way there, we stopped in Lander, Wyoming, which is um, the location where there's this place called Sinks Canyon, and it's a state park. And you drive way up in this canyon, all the way up, and we ended up 
like towing our trailer all the way to the top so the boys could do some fishing. But wow, it was beautiful, absolutely incredible. Um, so I, that's another place that I would potentially want to go back to and spend more time in. Um, Lander is kind of more on the western side, pretty much south of Jackson Hole, um, a few, a couple of hours. But that was a that was a really cool place. And then we spent a few days in Park City and did some trail riding there and park city has some of the the best mountain bike trails in the u.s i cool. would say very and cool. then we came home and we we just we booked it home and um got back into oregon and i wanted to show this here this is what i had in the mail waiting for me speeding ticket <laughs> yeah it's a giant speeding ticket no. <laughs> uh, and now the- a registered architect cormac in now registered in the state, in of, the state Oregon. of Oregon. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I am now a, a licensed architect and a registered architect. Which one should I go with? What do you think? Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know like what the designation difference between my licenses are. Yeah, really? I, I would assume, I don't know if there, so what's funny is in California, right, that you get the same piece of receipt this little thing that you could right. display it's like a it's like a third of a eight and a half by 11 like if you were to try fold it an eight and a half by 11 fold it like a letter you would that's the size of the license that you get you need to renew that every yeah. two years it's the same one as somebody who like is a manicurist right, <laughs> right? Yeah. it's like exactly I've the got same. a little yeah I, <laughs> I have that but then it also came with like a little card yeah, you get that too. And I didn't get that in Oregon, so I don't I don't know if that's coming or not. I mean, this is a they they, they call this piece of paper a decorative um wall yeah. uh, po- kind yeah. of a poster. And then I did get the little like it's on an 8.5 by 11. It's a little thing that you have to cut out and and keep it in your wallet uh to to show that you're a registered architect and I'm like yeah, probably not. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, gonna, I'm not, Hold I'm not on, a let card me get carrying it. architect. <laughs> let me get out my lamination. <laughs> right, get out your lamination machine. Uh, yeah, no, that, that I don't think that's going in my wallet. I think that would be kind of funny though. It's like you're going through your your credit cards and th- will this work? Can I pay with this? Can I pay with my Oregon registration? <laughs> you know, no. that's, I'm just, a, that's just a piece of paper. Like I'm a, a registered laser. architect. So right, yeah. what does that get me? Yeah. Well, yeah, so <laughs> it gives you a congratulations, sir. Now it's still three dollars. Right. <laughs> so, so that's my architectural tie-in for this episode because we go. did have to bring it back to architecture. So, yeah, I'm a, and, and I thought it would be kind of interesting to talk about what was different about getting this one. So, obviously, I went through the reciprocity process so that I didn't right. have to start over. Um, that would be crazy. And this is this is actually the reason I re-upped my NCARB certificate. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it was a year ago um, when they had like those took advantage discounts. of that awesome deep discount <laughs> that I totally right because really they not. basically waived all the back fees uh, right uh, and and so and then they raised the fees they've raised the fees twice now I don't know if I told you they've raised the oh, yeah, fees yeah. two years in a row now since I re-upped um, I think that's that's kind of every prices of everything go up even when you do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had to pay $450 to NCARB to get them to transmit electronic files to the state of Oregon. Um, wild. That's just wild. Can, I mean, on top of my my membership, you know. Is Oregon one of the states, because I know Maryland is, one of the states that you don't, or or is it exclusively reciprocity through NCARB? Or mm. is there two different routes? Cause you have two different routes. You can okay. you can submit all of the information yourself. Yeah. Except like transcripts, you would have to send in official transcripts. Those have to yeah. come from from yeah, the I, that's what university. I did. That's what I did because my first license was Florida. Then I got my Maryland license, and I I didn't have NCARB at the time, mm-hmm. and or did I? And the fees were prohibitive. I'm sure. Yeah. But it, it cost me almost nothing to do it other than time and a bunch of email exchange back and forth. Yeah, you have to track it all down. Yeah. I felt like my time was more valuable. 
<laughs> than the 450 bucks. So it was a toss up though. It's like, that's normally the yeah. kind of thing where I'd be like, screw it. I'm just doing it myself. Um, yeah, I'm cheap, but I'm cheap. Yeah. So, you I know, I get it. I get it. Yeah. You're, you're, you're willing to put in the time. I'm, I'm not willing exactly. to put in the time. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so I had to do dedication. that. And then, you know, in California to get your license there, mm-hmm. um, you have to take the California supplemental exam, which used right. to be orals. Now it's a digital exam, which is a lot like an ARE exam. Right. Right. And it's massive. It was a massive exam. Um, you had to go to a testing center. The only difference really was, uh, well, so, so first of all, because California is so large, there's a lot of different, uh, climate zones, ecosystems, and you, they want you to know all of them, right? So basically if you're going to get licensed in the state of California, you have to learn all of this stuff that you, no matter where you practice. Um, and so, and then you find out if you passed or failed on the spot, which was different than the NCARB test. I don't know if they've changed that since then, but, um, you had, you, you, we used to have to wait when I started the NCARB test. How long did you have to wait to get results for a test when you started taking those exams? Like in a oh, three or four land uh, three. Yeah. Um, it was like two weeks. I think for me, so. the first one I took, it was like six weeks. Oh, it could have been like, it was I, so I, long. Honestly, right? it's been so the long letter since I took it. came but... in the mail and you didn't want to open it. And then you just right? like, I don't want to <laughs> open it. And then you tear it open and you just kind of right. like slowly peel it back. And you're like, pass or fail. You know? Right, right, right. And so that was how it was. And then by the time, by the time I was like actually doing it and finishing up, it was... It was still a couple of weeks, I think, by the, I don't remember. It definitely wasn't like you learned right then. You had mm. to wait. You had a waiting period because they had to. Even though it was done on the computer and they already knew the answer, Yeah, you still, you still got to suffer. <laughs> I remember my first, the first go round. I was doing so well on my success rate, my pass fail success rate. And I took everything. And then the one that I dreaded the most was the structures one. And my buddy had just taken, he's like, man, it was cake. He's like, they didn't even have, they hardly asked me any, um, questions with formulas and calculations and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, well then maybe I'll just, he's like, you need to know all of the concepts and all of this other stuff. Okay. All right. And, and he was just like, it's like, I, I think it was like maybe like three or four questions or whatever. I'm like really on that whole test, that was it. He's for like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, f- yeah, for, for calculations. And I take his advice and assume that focus on other things, right? Yeah. Mine was 70% formulas and calculations and I bombed it so miserably. At least, at least, it, yeah. I mean, at least you you knew it when you were taking it, though. You're like, there's oh yeah, no I'm sitting there. It's just like, there's yeah, no chance. Yeah, no, wait, this. <laughs> I, I know what I'm it getting. It wasn't this like one. it wasn't like it was going to even was, be close, and you yeah. were going to have to worry. Like you just knew. <laughs> it was still a little de- demoralizing, though. You of know, of course, because you, you just like wasted your money. Man. You wasted your time. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. Well, shame on you for for listening to somebody yeah. else's so, experience. So moral of the story is don't trust your friends. Right. There you go. Yeah. Ever. 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 Yeah. So we had to, for for Oregon, I had to take a an online open book exam, which hmm. I thought, okay, uh, that didn't sound bad. And then it's like, okay, here's what you need to review. Here's what you should review. And it was the, they called it the jurisprudence exam. And it was basically all of Oregon's statutes pertaining okay. to practicing architecture, but then That's... other things too. And I thought, you know, this is, I actually liked this one a lot better. I mean, yeah. it wasn't just, I didn't just like it because it was open book. Like obviously I actually learned like the ARE, I, I learned a lot through the studying of it uh, right. about it, but also I felt like it actually applied. Whereas the California one um, for where I was working mm-hmm. on projects in California, it it was pretty regionally specific. It's an arid, yeah. dry, 
climate, you know, long overhangs, like <laughs> passive design was pretty right. straightforward. Right. I wasn't working in wetlands. I didn't need to know all the FEMA certifications and all the, all, you know, there was, and, and my, my role was pretty specific with design. It wasn't like having to uh, right. do right. all of the sustainability checklists and all that, but they still tested you on all that stuff. Um, I felt like this was actually really appropriate and, uh, I'm trying to remember. It was like 25 questions. It was 90 minutes, and it went in like five sec, five question chunks. And you could go back and like just like an ARE kind of exam. You can mm-hmm. mark questions. You can go back. You can you have 90 minutes to do do it however you want. And you can obviously have the website up, and you can use the find feature. But I think what was what was interesting about it was. You know, they would ask you a question. You would you would mentally just try to figure out kind of categorically. So if it had to do right. with, like, they would even ask you about naming your firm or general <laughs> registration questions, and and like because there's rules around how you can name your firm, and and there's rules about all kinds of things. It, you know, when it comes to practicing architecture, and again, like it just kind of forces you to know that stuff so that they can enforce it, right? Because there's how many of us have actually read the Architects Practice Act? Like who practice architect? Even okay. if you're not a licensed architect, you right. work in a firm. You're working on projects as an right. architect, basically. Like you don't. No, nobody knows that stuff. Like sorry, right. like <laughs> that's the truth. Like e- yeah, <laughs> you no, fall I, under the liability of the firm, not yourself, right? Um, yeah, that's a that's a long conversation that we can have. It is. It that. is. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. but you have a risk management team in a large firm. Like you have yeah. lawyers. Like it, they have right. all this stuff. And and you're, right. I mean that that's how it, that's how it actually operates. But they in right. in right. in Oregon they're actually asking you questions about that to obtain yeah. your registration, and which you know, I thought was that's good. It was nice. It was yeah. it was not not bad at all. I mean, at the very least, because we were having a conversation about licensure upon graduation and things like that, and how. There are some things that you can prepare yourself for when you're legally able to practice, right? Mm -hmm. Although you're just graduating school and you don't have some of the practical experience. In in things like that, though, forcing somebody to study, if you're sitting for the Michigan exam and studying the statutes to practice for your Michigan licensure as well, you're getting your licensure, but then, you know, everybody puts their their record into a state. Mine was the state of Florida. And so when I passed the um, exams, I would be a, a practicing architect in the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. And to honestly, to have a supplemental that said, okay, you're now legal to practice architecture in the state of Florida. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know, and w- what are your responsibilities for practicing mm-hmm. in the state of Florida? I, mm-hmm. I love that. Honestly, the that right there is probably the most applicable like yeah i was gonna uh, say appropriate it was appropriate yeah Yeah, it's just like it's that you've got a license now what and i also really actually appreciate it and nobody i don't think would go against this that it was open book because guess what like that's the world we live in come on like you can seriously look anything up (laughs) what would we when you're doing a code review, what do you do? Open the code books. When you're doing structural, you open the books. I mean, everything that we do is open book. So why not? Yeah, and and the thing about it to me is like these things get updated, right? right? And so you're looking, you're always looking at the most current version. You can't expect like the thing that you learned to be the law of the land forever. Like these things right, do right. get updated. New statutes get put in. Things get struck out. Um new sections get added as well as edits that happen. And so you're, you're looking at the most latest version, which is, you know, again, we're just going to look it up. And I, again, I thought that was pretty appropriate. So yeah. not, not bad at all. So 90 minutes, 25 questions. I think you had to get like an 84%. I don't know where they came up with that number. It must be based on the number of questions you could get wrong. Hmm. Um, leads to an 84%, but that was the passing minimum passing rate, but wow. yeah, no problem there. So it was, she had to get a B. You had to get a B, almost B plus, right? And so higher than what's required on AREs, I think, what that, wasn't that like 70? Yeah, I thought it was like around 70, yeah. Just like. Yeah, so um, anyway, <clears throat> that was my experience. I passed, and then it took, it, it literally took a couple of weeks for it to show up as a, 
like that that final step had actually well, happened. The, don't in this is how it happened in the state of Florida um, is that it had to go in front of the architectural licensing board for the state and they only met once a month. And so that could be what happened. And, I, I don't know. You know, it so seems that, like it's all digital. I don't, I don't know why, but uh, why it would take that long or why it would have. To well, I think, them, I think board. it just has to like physically mine had to physically go in front of the board and be reviewed and approved. So mm-hmm. like, like human eyes had to be on it. Even I think human eyes had to be on it, but I don't think it was like a board review for me. But anyway, um, who well, knows? that's cool. Though. There's a little bit of a black box there. So. And I know you're keeping your uh, your California license because yes, because never... once you have that, you never give it up. Exactly. <laughs> Eight people are asking us, okay, well, now that you moved to to Michigan, you're going to get a Michigan license. I'm like, yeah, you know, probably going to get a Michigan license. I haven't yet. Um, and then they were like, well, what are you going to do with your Florida and your Maryland? I'm like, Honestly, the same hours that I would need to be applying for CEUs for Michigan are the same that are going to go for Maryland, the same that are going to go for Florida. And it would it honestly would probably be more likely that I would do a project in Florida than I would in Michigan or Maryland. And so I'm always going to keep Florida because it was my first. It was my baby. Couldn't you just get it again if you needed it again? Like, couldn't you let it lapse? Uh, Was there any extra test or anything that you had to do there? No, you'd be, which is weird because in Florida, especially with needing to know that things need to go through the Miami-Dade certification and and all of the Florida product approval things and stuff like that, that they would have a supplemental, which they don't, which is really odd, but who who knows? Um, I mean, could I? You just have to comply when you do plan check. Right. I mean, if, yeah, it's if another I, way to handle it. So what the only thing that I have to do f- to maintain my Florida license is every year as I'm getting all of my CEUs is I need to do two additional hours of advanced code uh, CEU. Right. And and honestly, I mean, I <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but me and my currently ceu addiction my (laughs) ceu addiction that i'm like cool i want to know what was kind of going on with the bring uh, it on you know it's just like oh yeah they (laughs) just they adopted a new a no coot now i will say that some of the uh you know advanced code big old air quotes there some of the advanced code stuff is sort of ridiculous it's like what are there was one where it's just like, you know, how do you um, document uh, ADA on your, you know, like, your, or, you know, accessibility on your drawings? It's just like something kind of like randomly weird that you're just like, these are the things that are just kind That's of like standard code. Yeah. I was just like, how is this advanced? I mean, I want. It's just normal. Like, give me, yeah, it was exactly. Give me some meat. Like when you work in I public wanna... work, I guess maybe. <laughs> yeah. But, but the thing is, is that like, you know, we have, you know, like at our firm and, and, and in fact, this has been the same for like a couple of different firms that I've worked for that we have kind of a boilerplate that here is the template for code and accessibility that you're going to put in the front of your documents that you're going to tailor it for the the project that you're working on but at the very minimum this is the level of information that you need and so accessibility and how you do your fire and life safety documentation and all of that other stuff those are the things that you need to sit down and just pass like that's the first thing that the ahjs are going to look for right table stakes yeah Yeah, so like it it was it was so weird that like that was like that was like how is this advanced this is like this is the requirement this is the have to have yeah, the the requirements in California are different than they are in Oregon, or maybe I should say that the other way, other way around. But you know, we have to do um, zero net energy credits now right. to get our renewals in California and um, accessibility. But in Oregon, it's twenty four uh, HSUs. Is that what it is? HSU, health safety. HSW, uh, yeah, H- sorry, HSWs. I couldn't can remember the right letters. So just 24 HSWs. Um, I thought that was interesting that it was different. So. Well, how, so how many did you, what do you need in 
So both I want to say it's five hours of each of accessibility and five of net zero energy. And that's I think. all you needed in California. I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah. So like I could be wrong. People both, can correct both, me, both I, Mar- I just look it up every time I need to do it. Both Mar- Maryland and Florida it. require 22 and Florida requires the additional four, I'm sorry, two of the advanced code. I guess um, I should look it up. Huh? Just real time, real you time. Pro- you probably should. I Because I think it's, uh, this is an even year, so I don't need to worry about it for one more year. <laughs> but you're, you're doing your C, CEs all the time, and I, I like bundle them all together. And <laughs> CEs all the time, every time. In fact, I just did some today. All right. Uh, let's see. What what is Google says? Yeah, on advanced access water. And, oh, yeah. It says five hours of coursework on disability access requirements, five hours on zero net carbon design. That's California. That's California. Yeah, that's what okay. I thought it was. Okay. Yeah, so all those other HSW, like they, it's actually, tip. it has been historically difficult to find these courses. <laughs> <laughs> and so people offer them for money, right? Because they're difficult to find and you can get all of your hours done in one shot by taking these, these courses for why is the, hundreds of dollars. It's like, no. I, why I is the first thing that pops up when I go to the um, AIA.org website is, would you recommend this website to other people? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been there in a while yeah that's true you you have not um, not I am, a member i am looking to see oh my gosh yeah the, first there, thing you get you haven't even used the website yet would you is how <laughs> likely is it that you would recommend this website to a friend or colleague did you go did you go to it <laughs> i just that's went to great. it right now. yeah it looks All like right. a new website I seen well it. okay so here's the thing so it's a new website until you go to your profile. Then it reverts mm. back to the old website. Mm. All right. And all I'm trying to do. Okay, so. It's a more yeah. dead air here, Cormac. What are you doing? Uh, it was, I was just looking up the. So, sorry, Maryland requires 24. Florida only requires 22 HSWs. So that's similar, yeah. Yeah, what I mean, are the twenty-four HSWs? Yes. Okay. So, so Maryland's is twenty-four HSWs. Oregon. Florida's is is twenty-two, and then it does. Uh, it needs to reflect the Florida Building Code or the Advanced Florida Building Code. You want to guess how many I have at <laughs> September twelfth? Well, I think the last time we talked, you had sixty-eight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah, 72. I apparently have, 72. Yeah, I've, I've, I've slowed down. <laughs> Six a month. <laughs> like, why? 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 Actually, a lot of times it's just like I'll go to like, you know, lunch and learns and things like that. And granted, I'm doing them all remotely. So, you know, there is no lunch. It's just learn. But um, Provide it your is, own lunch. But it is kind of interesting because like today was... Um, talking about advanced waterproofing, you know, like blindside waterproofing and all of that other stuff. And, you know, it's good, especially since it's, you know, done by one of like the leading manufacturers that we, um, you know, typically use their details. And so it's always good to kind of like just see if they've updated all of their stuff, you know, because then we then have to turn around and update all of our stuff that if we're you know, like have standard details that were built off of like their previous go round and stuff. And so that's why I do it, you know, for more of just like, I guess, technical prowess for, for projects and stuff, I guess. I don't know. Like, you know, <laughs> know your you're questioning it, know you're, your you stuff. You do it, you're doing it, but you don't question it. And now you're kind of questioning it. Why do I do this? And then and here comes... That feels I feel like an out of body experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those who want to see what's going on right now, just go to the video. Yeah, for those who are listening, Cormac is holding up an orange tang skull. A tang skull. All right. 
Well, that that's all I wanted to talk about, Cormac. We're done here. Well, I'm glad you're back. Hmm, and it, it sort of feels like, you know, we're back now because I think both of us have gotten our uh, uh, summer trips, you know, behind us and school's back in session. And um, maybe next time we'll talk a little bit more now that I'm a, I, I think the last time we talked about school, I was, um, hadn't actually started with right. the students. You and, had just done like faculty meetings and stuff. Yeah. You know, planning. And, and so, uh, and so now I've, uh, I'm at week three. So the next time we'll talk, will be uh week four and I'll do my, we can talk about how, uh, people reacted the mid, mid, mid semester, um, uh, uh whatchamacallit, um, reviews. Yeah. Those okay. reviews we'll already. Well, it's just it's it's more of just a you know the studio instructor's progress review of like the you know where they're at with the assignments that we've you know given them, which right. you know is kind of interesting. And you know I, I I will give them you know some kudos that you know at this stage of where they are in school, you know they're they are seniors for what would be their, you know, bachelors of science in architecture. So their fourth year. Um, and, uh, they, everyone, all of them are sharp and all of them are with it. You know, there's not like anybody like, you know, I've met with 40 plus students in this, uh, in this class and all of them are, are pretty sharp. Nice. That's so, great. Yeah. We'll talk Very about cool. it. Very cool. All right. Save it. All right, man. Saving it. Putting a pen in it. Next.